Our guest this morning is none other than the hero of Las Vegas, a lot of TV specials, and personal appearances wherever he goes. It's the one and only Tony Bennett, who puts his own individualistic style on everything that he does. Do you mind, Tony, being called a, a style? Yeah, that's our housewives out there, right, our morning you. audience. Do you mind being called a stylist? No, not at all. Actually, that's what I am. I'm a Toon Smith, a guy who, uh, in the tradition of uh, pops, American pop singers, I go out looking for songs, whether they come from Broadway or movies or Tin Pan Alley. It seems to me that in the stuff that you do and that you record, you give it good thought that you will try to be very selective about the material you do. Something, I don't want to be corny about it, but something that seems to have some inner feeling to it. Well, there is a lot to that. I, I like to sing love songs, and I like uh, feeling on, on performances. I like the feeling of a thing. I think that communicates. So that I look for good music. I go toward good music. Are you uh, a romanticist, a sentimentalist yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. you, were you uh, had that kind of family upbringing, warm, right. close together? Right, right. Human, right. warm. You know, I know that you're the favorite of a lot of singers, which seems to me high praise indeed. It sure is. Uh, that a lot of people call you the singer's singer. I, it seems to me that one of the reasons is that you give a great deal of thought to the lyrics. Do you, do you read them over carefully, like poetry first, before you put them into a song? No, actually, I, I, I think of words and music and how they marry one another. If it's a good marriage, it's a good song. Do you have any composers who, who seem to be uh, more toward the, the Bennett style of things than others? No, uh, outside of maybe uh, Harold Allen. But uh, there are some good contemporary uh, composers around, you know, like uh, Burt Bacharach and Jim Webb and the Beatles. There's been some good songs in the last 10 years that have come along. But the old pros really uh, hold up, like the Cole Porters and Rogers and Hart and do you think they'll be singing them 50 years from now? Oh, definitely. That's definite already. When you examine a song for the first time, say it isn't, you know, a standard that's been great for 20 years, what do you look for in it? Well, um, it's Martin Block, who is the first personality disc jockey in, the, in America, told me how to look for one, and, and it's a very incongruous way of, of hearing about it, but he said, that if you get goosebumps, if, you, if, if, if it hits you, you know, and you get a feeling that that's it, that's when it's right, that you should follow your instincts. You, it's a gut reaction. No, not, not guts, no. No, gut. I mean, uh, or heart, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, if, it, if it's something that, that moves you emotionally and you just feel it and, you, you, and it's believable, and you get a good feeling about it. You say, what a beautiful song. It's like hearing Here's That Rainy Day. When you hear it, you just, you, you get goosebumps, you know, with the right performance. Would you make a distinction between that type of music that you mentioned of Arlen and Porter, Webb and everything, and a lot of the fringes of the rock music today? Well, I, I don't mind rock. I, I like the whole spectrum of music. But the only uh, thing I dislike is um, this kind of acid, very, very super angry, super noisy, uh, almost unbearable, unmelodic, unharmonic performance. I don't understand that. I mean, I think that's the opposite of music. I personally think that music should be peaceful and uh, it's, it's a great personal luxury for the average listener and it, it should be uh, full of uh, experience and technique and do you performance. See, do you see music as the proper agent of a uh a social message or a criticism, or do you see it simpler than that? No, I, I don't think it has anything to do with politics at all. No music is no. It's music no. is outside of the, the message is that everybody should uh, get together, love each other. Yeah, that's right. not bad. Not bad. Are you kidding? Without it, we we uh, we're in trouble. I have seen you work, and I've seen you gradually come out. You well, you're wearing a little more mod stuff. I've seen you in a white suit and then gradually... It's Chinese. Is it? Yeah. It's a very... Uh, Mao jacket, sort of. Yeah, it? It, it is. It's very hip. But I, I've seen you also in uh, your white suit and gradually as you got into your act, you'd shed the jacket, you'd open your shirt, it's your collar, 
you uh, loosen your tie, you seem to react. Do you count on vibes from the audience a lot in your act? Completely. Um, the audience tells the performer just how to go about it. Would, that would spark your performance? That's all I, I live for, is to, um, is to in, have uh, the public enjoy what I'm doing and, and uh, make sure that they're entertained. How important to you are the arrangements, the charts that accompany you? Well, it, very important because it's, it's how it's done and, and uh, I, I've had a lot of top musicians that, like Ralph Burns and Neil Hefty and, and Tori Zito and Robert Farnham do these like arrangements. with Basie too? Right, I love Basie best of all. And yet, you know, I think I'd love to be in some salon with you late at night with one piano. Well, I like to sing that way best of all, really. That's my style, really. When you go to a party, you know, Tony Bennett and friends, do you like to relax and, and, uh, and sing for your friends? Or do you regard that as a busman's holiday? No, I don't. I, I just don't think of it. I'm, when I'm off the stage, I really don't um, think of going to parties and, uh, and doing that. But uh, I like getting together with my friends and... and uh, Every once in a while it may come up and I may do it. Who are your friends? What kind of people? Are they in the business? Well, musicians and actors, uh, they most primarily are in the business, yes. yes. You think they're interesting types? I really do, yeah, because they're giving people, they're not takers. They're, they love to entertain people. They love to think about the public and say, gee, what? I think this will knock them out. I think, let's try this one. They like to experiment. You've had some great success with not only your Vegas live performances, but you've got some very recently done big TV specials in Great Britain. Right, and also in Hawaii. Yes, now how about that when you get outside of the boundaries? Do, is there, do you take a different approach? Do you get a different kind of reaction? No, I, I just do what I know how to do. And uh, they love, I, I must be honest with you, they love American performers overseas. Um, they like the American style. Maybe they don't go for the American politics, but they, they sure love American people. They love the way we dress, and they imitate the things that we do in our, our lifestyle. They like, they like the um, kind of luxurious life that we have. When you're abroad, do you like to sample such things as uh, the native uh, foods and the sites and so forth? Well, yes, that's the beauty of it. And also, you know, when you are in Europe, for instance, they have a culture that's 2,000 years old and, and uh, we're still young pups as Americans, and so we have a lot to learn from them. Oh, you have a European culture yourself in your background, haven't well, you? Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm an American. So. Well, but I mean, but uh, in your background? Uh, My father's an Italian immigrant. Yes. Right. But, we're all like that, but when you get finally get to Europe, you know, and you realize they have a 2,000-year culture, and we only have a 250 or 150-year culture, you know, this kind of thing. There's a big gap there. They have a lot to. They have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge on how to live that I think Americans uh, should really pick up on. I think it would help their their way of life a lot better. Is their pace different from ours? Yes, it's much more relaxed, and uh, they still get a lot done. What kind of man are you? What kind of life do you like away from the stage? Well, I love to paint uh, uh, pictures, and uh, I love to paint all the time. I paint and study Oils? music. Yes. Do you? Yeah. Are you quiet uh, away from the stage? I think I might be called that. I'm, I, I love privacy. I love uh, just listening to good music and put on, take out the paints and Do you get mind into the, it. this kind of stuff? No, it's all according to how it's done, and this is very comfortable, thank you. I hope so, because we're is. an admirer of yours. And thank uh, you. I think it's an event when you come to town, you bring up an interesting perspective. We have uh, now in this hall that we're sitting, I happen to see an advance agent for somebody who's so far removed from you, also a big artist, Jethro Tull, yes. coming in a few months. So far different from you, and he too, as you have, will bring a big crowd here. I suppose that a real musician would say there's room for the Leonard Bernsteins, the exactly. Jimmy Webbs, the Jethro well, Tulls, the Tony Bennett. This is what Bennett. I was trying to tell the, the, uh, the young grown-ups uh, coming into the world, is that there's a whole spectrum of music out there. It's not just... I, I dislike this era where, they, uh, where originally uh, the producers went to the, the uh, 
young grown-ups and said, this is your music, and which was rock and roll, and kind of shut out all the other doors. It shut out all the classical music. It shut out all the wonderful folk music and, and all of the great jazz music, which is America's only culture. I disliked it because there's all kinds of music for everybody. As long as you, the more you listen to it, the more interested you'll really get into it. Uh, you know, it's very entertaining for someone to be motivated and to enjoy music. It's about the strongest thing there is. It's almost as strong as a bullet. <laughs> really. Yes. And really. In many places, maybe uh, where they say uh, music soothes the savage breast. You know. Well, also, uh, you know, Sartre. Uh, brought out the fact that if you control the, if the right music, you know, what he said, if you give me the control of the music of a country, I could control the politics of a country. Frenchman said that, yes? I believe so, yes. Well, you're, you are a scholar and you like No, I'm not. I just, I just happen to know that that's a, a truth. Uh, when, you, when, you, uh, when you have good music, I notice people really live better. It's like when Sinatra was just coming up and he had that whole great romantic era. People really got along so nice because they, uh, they, they dressed up, they took their girls on dates and went to see, hear some nice Tommy Dorsey music, romantic. It sounds like nostalgia, but it isn't. It's actually, if it were happening tonight, it would be just as wonderful. And it would not be dated, it would not be old-fashioned. In fact, it's actually better in many ways because it was built on good songs by Jimmy Van Heusen and, and George Gershwin, and, uh, you know, Irvin Berlin, good songwriters. And we'll be here for a long time. Yeah, they'll be here forever. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. So man. nice to have Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Our guest this morning has been Tony Bennett, the one and only. And we'll be back with more of Omelette in just a minute.